A note hangs from a hook on the... playing across her broad, stern face. This woman marches toward you. She plants her feet and crosses her arms. He have some nerve barging into a woman's home, interrupting her from her weaving? Why, when me husband comes home... The guild hall seems cluttered and claustrophobic. Beaded with sweat, the older woman before you fusses about the dust and occasionally helps herself to a drink from the ale kegs in the corner. You finally catch her attention. If ye be looking for the council, she slurs, they be down at the barrow all night and day, dealing with the kerfuffle there. A note is pasted to the door. The you try the latch on the heavy door and find it locked. Oh! mumbles Helga from across the room. She wiggles her meaty finger at the door. There was a time when we Barrow Dwarves were known as Cairn Dwarves. It was Brogan who instructed us to journey to the surface world each time a clan member died, that we might leave their body there on a rocky cairn. The rule of Brogan Nachtjager was long and just. The rivalries within our clan were quelled beneath his leadership, and we lived for many centuries in peace. As the centuries passed, Brogan Nachtjager grew old and frail. His great battle prowess faded from him, and he grew melancholy. He financed great feats of construction and expansion. Under his aging guidance, our clan home grew ever larger, its tunnels reaching towards Stygia, until at last, workers punched through that divide. Frail and dying, Brogan followed the tunnel he had ordered built and stepped into the Stygian Abyss. There he petitioned that realm's demonic lords for a warrior's death. The Stygian lords granted his request, returning him to the prowess of his youth and enslaving him as a gladiator for their amusement. Returned to his youthful glory, 
Brogan Noctjager fought unlike any other the world has known. As Brogan walked, he aged once more. His bones became brittle, his back stooped, and all the while his feet were scorched by Stygia's shifting sands and his throat was parched by its ash-filled air. When Brogan at last arrived at the gate to his former domain, as old and frail as he had been when last he saw it, he found it guarded by four ancient red dragons of the abyss. They tore his body limb from limb and scattered the pieces to the four far corners of the world. The dragons then tore open the gates to Brogan's Deep, wreaking their vengeance upon the clan within. A great war was waged against the forces of Stygia within those ancestral halls, and, in the end, our forefathers chose the only victory they could. They collapsed the upper chambers of the clan home and sealed the passage between this world and the world below. Thus it was that, exiled from our ancestral home, we Barrow Dwarves came to live upon the snowy surface like the dead. We learned to follow the Elkin beasts in their migrations, hunting them for food. But the clan grew ever smaller amidst the spirits of this place. There came a time when there was only one man left alive who still remembered Brogan's face. His name was Old Man Kavanaugh. Like Brogan before him, he was old and frail. No longer able to hunt, he thought himself a burden upon the clan. One night, as the blizzard howled, he slipped from his tent and walked into the blinding snows. There, his breath turned to ice upon his beard. Closer to death than life, Old Man Kavanaugh stumbled and found his face pressed against the tattooed arm of Brogan Noctjager embedded in the snows. The hunters found him there the next morning and brought his body back to camp together with the arm. Clutched in Brogan's frozen fist was a chunk of hellish rock that sputters and smokes to this day. It is known as the Kavanaugh Stone, as the old man is said to have survived many dark hours by its warmth. Perhaps the stone played some role in the mysterious spring that formed where Brogan's frozen arm had been discovered. The water, warm and sulfurous, is still used for many ceremonial purposes. Known as Brogan's Tears, we continue to bring this magical water to the surface by way of the old man's well. This well, carefully preserved, still marks the original site at the village's southwest corner. The waters you stand in now are drawn from that same source. Please follow the waters through to the second half of our exhibit, where you will learn of a third place where Brogan's tears have surfaced. In the dim light, you see a message scrawled onto the stone abutment at the water's edge. And so it is that through the warmth of Brogan's tears, we Barrow Dwarves have journeyed from the past into the present, from the stuff of legend to the substance of our daily lives. Besides the old man's well, Brogan's tears also emerge at the Barrow site, the cultural heart of our village. It is there that the Kavanaugh stone is held, and there that Brogan's arm still rests. The Barrow site is holy ground, sacred to us all, forever wetted by Brogan's tears and imbued with his warrior spirit. As his sons, we partake in that spirit and stand as eternal guards against the forces of Stygia. A message has been scrawled in chalk upon the damp stone. It seems to have been done casually, as if by an idle hand.
Mining is now the primary industry here in Brogan's Arm. This began two generations past with Arn Steinfar's founding of the Steinfar Gem Mine. The vein was rich and the clan saw great prosperity. With prosperity, however, came greed. The vein, laden with gems, lured the miners ever deeper into the rock, ever closer to Brogan's Deep, which we had so long ago abandoned to the demon hordes. It wasn't long before those hordes broke through, escaping their long confinement and slaughtering the very miners they had lured to free them. Arn Steinfar and his eldest son died in that haunted place. The Guild Council in its wisdom was quick to act. Volunteer armsmen entered the mine and held an important pass, while behind them, charges were set and detonated. In the end, only the uppermost floor of the mine remained intact. The old gem mine is still owned by the Steinfar family and is currently being reinvigorated and returned to production by Arn Steinfar's grandson, Jager. Acting in full compliance with strict council regulations, Jager has agreed to pursue an iron vein that runs parallel to the surface. As of this writing, work has been underway for three years without violation. The Steinfar mines are an important part of our clan heritage. A moth-eaten fragment of coarse wool dyed in fading blues is suspended within a metal frame. It must have some historical significance you are not aware of. You peer into the darkened room. Shovels and... You peer in... The heavily muscled dwarf gnaws at his lower lip as he pounds the anvil. Sensing your presence, he turns to face you. What do you want? The gray-skinned man inspects the elken beast's carcass, his hands brushing lightly against its side. His brow is furrowed in concern. He bring ill winds, traveler, he advises. Negative energy streams through a tiny fissure, escaping.
The hollow tree is smooth and old. You spy a small hole at the tree's base. <gasps> The dirt turned up around it. Blast that elf! Are you sure the stone be gone? Mayhaps it fell and skittered into some dark corner we cannot find. The Kavanaugh stone be gone, gentlemen, and Brogan's honor with it, stolen by the foreigner. Aye, it be him! He's hidden it somewhere! Quiet! Keep your voices down, lest the whole town learn of what's gone on. At least the elf be captured, even if the stone still be at large. Ye be sure your minds will hold him, Steinfar? I followed every one of your foolish safety regulations, Councilman. Ye tell me if me minds will hold him. They be fit to pen in demons, Grindlogger. The minds will hold a foolish elf just fine. Regardless, he be down there now. I've sealed the doors behind him and posted a warning to any of me miners who might have reason to go down. Aye, and now we wait. The well is old and re- You almost gag on the thick, foul-smelling mists. Breathing through your mouth, you look about you. Rats scuttle in the distance, and more than one floats dead in the warm, bubbling waters. The slick stone beneath your feet is pebbled with translucent deposits where the water has splashed or dripped onto its surface. It almost seems to be alive somehow. The limestone floor seems to have grown around this more ancient wall, crumbling like winter ice along an island's edge. The dwarven pictograms, clearly of an ancient style, are impossible to decipher the beneath the thin sheen of mineral deposits. To exist in the soft blue flame seemed kept alive by magic a alone. The patternless mange sprouts from once pink skin. The creature peers through the mists of Brogan's tears, seeking a resting place where it can be free of the rats that endlessly pursue it.
The thin patina of water seems to shimmer beneath you as you climb. You suddenly realize that the water is running uphill towards the dim light you see above you. arcing through your bones. Time itself seems to stand still. You are in the Barrow site, Brogan's tears welling up before you. Beyond, you can see a small cairn where his arm must once have rested. The altar that once held the Kavanaugh stone lies barren. Seize them, cries a commanding voice. Seize the foreigner. If they've come this far, they know too much. We'll know this then, challenges another. Ye face the sons of Brogan in their wrath. Why are ye waiting, armsmen? Calls a third. Capture him like ye did the elf and seal him in the mine. Your head throbs from the armsmen's blows. With wry irony, you remember the night hag sending you here in search of answers. Seek the Kavanaugh stone and you will not fail, she said. She had warned you that the man would be hard to find, but she had said nothing of the price you'd pay to hear his answers. Voices shatter your reverie. You wonder if you'll even live long enough to see another day. How dare ye and your lapdog elf think to steal the Kavanaugh stone, threatens one of your captors. Into the mine with ye then. Ye can stay there until the council figures out how it is we intend to hang ye. You stumble into the writhing mass of negative energy. Its tendrils embrace you, burrowing beneath your flesh. As you lay there, you spy a message written in chalk upon the wall. It reads, My name is Cauldrian Air. Chalk message looms out of the darkness like a ghost. I stayed behind to steal the Kavanaugh stone. The others have gone north. Soon we will be able to make the journey home. A chalk message looms out of the darkness like a ghost. I'm forgetting things. I can actually feel the memories slip away. I must write everything down before I forget it all. message looms out of the darkness like a ghost. The others will come for me. The prince said he knew I would be in danger and that he had a plan. He promised me that someone would be sent. message looms out of the darkness like a ghost. What am I doing here? I was supposed to write something. I don't remember why.
A chalk message looms out of the darkness like a ghost. The rats are everywhere. Have they always been? I don't think so. But I don't know. Why can't I think straight? Meat sizzles on a nearby spit, the aroma mingling with the harsher scents of rust and rock dust. He leans against an anvil, his shoulders hunched, his head buried deep within his hands. The man raises his head from his hands and begins to speak. I know you, don't I? He asks, squinting to see you better in the light. The armor, his sad eyes confess. That's all I recognize. 